Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and thank you for joining us. This is the second part of the series for resection of arteriovenous malformations. Uh, we're glad to have with us Dr. Michael Lawton for the first series. He discussed with us his uh, pearls of technique for resection of these difficult vascular lesions. This second session will be a review of my surgical videos with his critical appraisal of the techniques, and we hope that this dialogue would provide a good learning environment uh, for you all. Michael, thanks again for being with us. Yeah, and thank you for having me. We'll go ahead and stop with, uh, start with the disclosures. I have none, and neither Dr. Michael Lawton. Uh, we have previously discussed the importance of a wide exposure for arteriovenous malformation, and that's pretty much for two reasons. Number one is you often need to dissect the sulci within the normal brain to find the feeders to the arteriovenous malformation. And secondly, if you run, God forbid, into intraoperative bleeding or brain edema, you often need to uh, leave your bone flap out as a form of decompressive uh, craniotomy. I'm going to go ahead and sort of review these slides pretty quickly. The uh, angio architecture of the arteriovenous malformation is pretty classical. It is wedge shaped toward the ependema, and the veins are often on the surface. Arachnoidal dissection of the veins leads us to the arteriovenous malformation, and uh, coagulating the feeders one by one through the sulci often is the most expeditious way to disconnect the arteriovenous malformation. However, the feeders through the white matter can be often very daunting because they don't respond to a bipolar coagulation. Um, the next step uh, is really uh, after very wide exposure is arachnoidal dissection, as we initially talked about, uh, getting the feeders very superficially and going around the arteriovenous malformation in a surrendical fashion. And uh, as Dr. Spessler has previously mentioned, leaving the veins very superficially intact as much as possible and creating these small channels along the AVM and disconnecting the uh, feeders deep, which can be the most difficult part of the operation, may be beneficial. As much as the veins you leave intact, you leave the flow within the nidus untouched, and that uh, prevents uh, intraoperative uh, challenges with hemostasis. Any other pearls uh, to this point, Michael, please? Yeah, no, I think your illustrations are excellent. I think um, this uh, one here showing the circumferential dissection is very important to um, really work all sides of the nidus, um, not work yourself to one or two or three spots, but um, really uh, approach and steadily deepen the dissection. You don't want to get into deep holes where um, if you were to get some bleeding, you would have a tough time sort of figuring out where you are or finding that, uh, that bleeder. And here is going further deep in the margin between the arteriovenous malformation and the brain, coagulating some of the feeders. It's very interesting. Some of the feeders are very easily responsive to bipolar coagulation. Some of them burst and makes, and this really maneuver makes their management very difficult. And really, you have to recognize the deeper you get into the white matter, the increased likelihood of these red devils, as you call them, causing uh, hemostatic problems. What are your pearls when you run into these feeders bursting within your bipolar blades? Yeah, so um, a couple of pearls. One is you want to have the um, AVM microclips ready to go because these thin walled vessels, they just simply won't cauterize. So you really need to. Uh, use the clips, and then as you're um, getting ready to, to tackle one of these, you want to make sure you have a good length of the vessel exposed, not just a point of the artery, um, so that if things uh, burst and start to bleed, that you're not chasing it into the brain tissue as it's bleeding. You want to have uh, a segment exposed, uh, ready to go, and uh, deal with any complication that might come. Right, and it seems like as you get away from these white matter feeders toward more of the normal brain, they form a better wall that is responsible or responsive to a bipolar coagulation. However, in that circumstance, you're really removing more normal brain. So it's best to have a good segment of them ready to go. And then putting clips, I use permanent aneurysm clips, the smallest you can find, because they're easier to handle rather than AVM clips. And definitely put the clips on both sides before coagulating these ones. And then as you 